Hey everybody, welcome back to Nephil Entertainment, and this is my coverage of Robin Robert Rickman's Secret History of Comics. This is episode three, The Trials of Superman. <laughs> Everybody, tonight's episode covered Superman. Well, a few things I learned about Superman. One, uh, most people recognize him as the third most known symbol in the world. Apparently, the S is a well-known symbol next to the crucifix and Jewish star, which says a lot. Because he's also sort of, I guess, the all-father of all superheroes. If there wasn't Superman... We wouldn't have any superheroes. I don't think we would have any superpowered heroes whatsoever. And that includes stuff that's not in comic books. So we find out Jerry Siegel and Joe Shooter were the two creators of Superman. And they were your typical nerds. Jerry was always reading comics and has no stuck in a book. Whereas Joe was a scrawny little nerd who liked to draw. And who had big glasses. So, two guys come up with the concept of Superman based on what they necessarily liked, which was might and charisma and all around just what makes people think they're super guys. Well, first one they inspired him, apparently he was supposed to be a villain, a bad guy. What? And he looked a lot like Lex Luthor, ironically. So... You would think that this might inspire some people to take up the comic and actually run with it. No, not really. We find out that nobody accepted the idea. Well, a few years later, Jerry's fa uh, father was killed by a robber. And then all of a sudden, he wants truth, justice. And that's when all of a sudden, ironically, Superman becomes a good guy. A force for good who never kills anybody but basically just you know does the right thing and is just an all-around terrific guy which to me says uh, Jerry everything okay bud but when the guys are trying to get the word out try to get Superman out it was rejected constantly well after so many years of being rejected DC finally took it out but DC kind of pwned them in a way. Because after they signed over contracts and rights and stuff, the guys didn't get much royalties with everything. Because Superman hit the ground running, took off, everybody knew him. He became this big pop icon during the 40s and 50s. And technically, he still is today. Especially with the big blockbusters that have come out. But anyway, back in Jerry and, and Joe's time. They didn't get much royalties whatsoever. In fact, they got hardly anything. But they were demanded to make comic book after comic book after comic book. Make a stuff. Let's do stuff. Let's make some stuff. Well, they signed to finally stick, stick up and say something about it. Well, DC didn't quite like that. So, they ended up losing all rights to Superman whatsoever. Especially didn't help either whenever the TV show came out and Superman became even more popular, especially with the new generation coming out, because kids love Superman. Uh, but, yeah, the guys barely scraped by for years. In fact, it's kind of bad, is that they actually were at the bottom of the food chain socially for a long time. I mean, you had Joe who would draw comics for CD comic books for companies. You have Jerry who actually tried to get rehired back into the company. He actually tried to put his thoughts into the whole story, but nobody wanted to hear what he had to say. At some point, Joe even got to the point where he's delivering mail as a messenger. I mean, these guys were at the bottom of the food chain for years. And it wasn't until back in the 70s when they actually said, hey, we're going to make a movie based on Superman. Oh, uh, hell no. Guys stood up. Jerry and Joe would not take it anymore. Well, after rallying up some other artists who knew their story and wanted them to get what they deserved, 
They finally went to, to the courts, finally got things squared away to where DC actually was going to pay them $20,000 a year for the rest of their lives. It's not bad, especially for that time and era. I mean, that <laughs> that's some pretty awesome royalties. Now the guys can basically live off that for the rest of their lives. Not to worry about a thing. Not only that, but they got what they wanted the most. Money was great. The royalty was great. I'm sure they're not disputing any of that. Excuse me. But what they wanted was for their names to be beside Superman. Superman created by. That's what they wanted. And that's what they ended up getting. DC actually acknowledged them being the creators of Superman. And they were. But it's going to do a wrap for me. Um, let me know what you think down, down at the bottom about this whole Superman thing and about how all hell broke loose for Jerry and Joe. But uh, my question for you is, do you think what uh, DC did to them was fair? Or do you think DC reserved all rights to themselves for Superman? Answer this poll right up. Huh? But that's going to do a wrap for me. Uh, give me a big thumbs up down at the bottom. Comment. Subscribe. And stay tuned to the end of the video for more content. But my name is Matt Turner L. And you are watching Netflix Entertainment. To all you daydreamers and creators out there. Keep your eyes in the cloud. Peace. <laughs>